Okay, everyone, um, good evening and thank you for being in Fort Bragg at 8 o'clock on a weekday. Thank you, weeknight. Thank you very much. My name is Tom Allman and I'm the Sheriff of Mendocino County. I'm sorry for the late um, hour of a press conference. However, the purpose of this press conference is to relate uh, an incident that happened today and to tell you where we are in the investigation. At approximately 11.50 this morning, right before noon, uh, there was a, a group of Alameda County deputy sheriffs who are assigned to the special response unit and they were assisting in the operation in the same area as where the burglaries for the cabins have been occurring. As the team was performing their task, they came under, under fire um, from a subject which they identified. They could see that it was suspect Basler who was approximately 100 meters away. The team, the three-member team, returned fire in self-defense and the subject appeared to disappear. Um, several minutes later, uh, this same three-man team came under fire again from a different location. It appeared as if the suspect was attempting to flank the three-member team. The three-member team, once again, um, in self-defense, responded and, and returned fire. We know that the three-member team fired approximately 10 shots. The interviews are occurring right now. The Mendocino County policy in an officer-involved shooting is to bring in the Mendocino County District Attorney's Office investigation team. And as we speak right now, the three-member team from Alameda County Sheriff's Office is being interviewed. And the investigation is occurring. And the investigation is very clear that there were three acts of attempt murder that happened today on three peace officers in Mendocino County. The three police officers, the three deputy sheriffs are victims of a crime and they're being treated as such and I'm not going to release their names right now. They're victims of a crime and we're conducting the investigation as we speak. The brush is very heavy, the brush is very dense and the fact that they lost sight of him was not a surprise but it's been happening throughout this entire investigation in this 400 square mile area. As we speak right now, we're actively reinitiating a very high intensity search in the area. The last time that Basler was seen, as you know from the press conference last time, he was wearing camouflage and light brown clothing. This time, the suspect was wearing black clothing. And this is apparently his, his reg regular MO because before any of the crimes happened, the people that knew Basler knew him to always wear black clothing. So somehow he changed clothing, and it's it's uh, all this information is being relayed to our officers in the field. As we speak right now, there's approximately 40 law enforcement officers continuing the search, and throughout the night and into tomorrow, we expect to receive more resources of canines from both Southern California and Northern California that are being flown into the area. We are um, somewhat hampered by the immediate search because of not only the fact that it's very dense brush but the fact that the suspect has a rifle and and they, they clearly saw that he was shooting at them with a rifle and they were it's it hampers their ability to immediately chase them no law enforcement officers were injured we do not know if the suspect was injured during this engagement we are we have hounds in the area that as as the daylight comes tomorrow we may know more of this information. And a reverse 911 call was sent to all structures in the area that have telephones, landline phones, and any cellular phones that are registered in that area. And the reverse 911 call was for the purpose of advising residents to shelter in place and to relay any additional information to the sheriff's office. I want you to, to assure you that the Alameda team um, was safely extra extracted and they were replaced by another team in the area. We're very, very um, lucky that this situation was the way it was where no law enforcement officers were injured. I want you to, to assure you that I've been in touch with Sheriff Gregory Ahern from Alameda County Sheriff's Office several times today and Sheriff Ahern dispatched Captain Brady uh, to assist with the investigation and make sure that the policies of Alameda County Sheriff's Office are adhered to. As I said, as we speak, additional law enforcement officers are continuing to come into this area. 
I'm not going to specifically tell you where this engagement occurred other than to tell you it's in the same area as the other residential burglaries and it's in the same area where the fire where the shotgun and the 22 rifle were reported stolen earlier this week I want to once again reiterate to the public there is no plan to end this operation until we get to a resolution we still have people who are out of work because they can't go into the woods, and we still have people who cannot recreate in the forest, and, and that weighs upon our, our decisions every day. But we are very determined and we're very appreciative of the law enforcement officers that are coming in from the mutual aid system. And California Emergency Management Agency, they're usually known for their assistance during fires. They're very active in getting mutual aid to Mendocino County because our resources at this point are taxed beyond what we, we normally could do. Oh, I want to put out a, a special thanks to the wives of these men who are out there. The, um, these guys are out there, this is day 34, and they're going into dangerous territory. And their wives kiss them goodbye at the beginning of the week and see them in seven days. And um, the wives are being as brave as the men are who are going out and, and searching for this armed and dangerous, and as we know today, a very violent offender. So that's the news that happened today. I'm sure you saw the law enforcement officers in the cars on Highway 20 and it's it's going to continue. We, we believe we're getting closer. We believe that we can get resolution soon and we're keep getting in touch with the family at all times to make sure the families of both murder victims are aware of our investigation. At this time we'll be happy to take your questions but I want you to know if your question involves a technical question that deals with the tactics of specific tactics that our officers are doing, we are not going to relay that. We obviously, for obvious reasons. Dave? Tell me, since the time of engagement, there was an approximate range of 100 yards? 100 meters. Uh, how were you able to confirm its identity from that range? The officers were, uh, they, they said they were able to identify who it was. I'm not, I have not talk, seen the officers yet. Okay. But they said they were able to identify who it was, um, and I'm just going to take them at their word. And, and in the field, they all have spotting scopes and binoculars that, that help them identify distances. Those you said you believe the suspect was flanking the deputies from Alameda County. I mean, are you talking like in, in entrapment, just waiting for them, setting them up, or, or a fluke encounter? We believe at least one of the homicides occurred when the suspect flanked went in a covert action around Councilman Mello. Intentional. Intentionally. And we believe that's a, a very um, staged and intended, intended action of his. Sheriff, do you think someone's assisting the suspect at this we, point? We have absolutely no information that he has one-way or two-way telephonic conversation. We are in close contact with his family and the, the folks who we believe are his friends. And we have no reason to believe that people are supplying him with food, with logistics, with information. It, it, we have no information on that. However, I, I will say that there is a $30,000 reward for information, not participation, that would lead us to the safe apprehension of Basler. Sheriff George, you know where I'm from, but NBC in San Francisco. How confident are you that he is even still in that area? I mean, the forest has so many holes. Is there any chance that he could be in there? Uh, so the question is, how confident are we that he's still in the area? At the time of the shooting, we had several teams in the area, and somewhat of a, not exactly surround, but we're, we're somewhat confident that we had other law enforcement officers in the area and they would have seen him escape the area or heard him, we think. Now, the, uh, the dogs were sent into the area immediately and the dogs hit on a strong scent. However, once again, um, in, in normal tracking of a dog, you'd be able to let the dog go on the leash and you would chase after him. We're somewhat hindered because of the resistance and the rifle. So we're still on the scent, the scent hasn't gone away and we're we're working throughout the night. Captain Brady, can you uh, address the, the, the deputies that you have here? Are they members of the SWAT team? Are they uh, patrol deputies? Or who's here from your Well, they are, they are patrol personnel. One of their ancillary assignments is the SWAT, the SWAT team. We, have, we call it the special response unit because we do other, other things besides just the tactical. We have other deployment options. Uh, these are highly trained individuals that are very confident working in this environment. Uh, one of them, the sergeant, is a team leader and he's, he's been on the team for a number of years. And like I said, he's a highly trained individual working in this terrain. So, so this team here would know what they're doing? Correct. 
<clears throat> How many shots were fired by the suspect in this encounter this afternoon? And was it a full automatic weapon? It was not fully automatic. We do not know the specific rounds, number of rounds, because the interviews are occurring now. We are hoping that we'd have that information before the press conference tonight. But we do know that our, our officers fired approximately 10. And there was some speculation earlier in the week about the photograph that was released, uh, that the weapon he was holding looked like it was locked out. Was that, uh, can you comment on that? Was it masked out intentionally in the photo? We've done a lot of research on the weapon. I'm not prepared to say exactly what weapon it is. We believe the front of the weapon has a flashlight taped to it. I know some people have said it's a tripod, but because the photo's quality, we're unable to specifically state that it even is blacked out, uh, if it has black tape on it or if it was manufactured to be a black. So that photo wasn't altered in any way? Surely not by us. Okay. No. Can you say whether the <laughs> weapon that you believe was used today uh, was the weapon previously in his possession or perhaps one of the ones allegedly stolen from the cabins? About it matched, they, it was not a 22. it was a high caliber rifle. Um, and it matched the um, type of weapon that was used in the homicide of Councilman Mello and the weapon that's in the photograph. So as his team was doing their search, they were fired upon? Yes, first. yes. The first shots came from the suspect. And how much time passed between the second encounter? We know that it was a short time um, in the area of 10 or 15 minutes. I can't say specifically without talking to the officers. And this is the, that information certainly isn't going to be withheld, but as soon as we get it in the next press release, that information will be there. And can you quickly say again, so 11.50, the first shots were fired, they returned. A short time later, they were fired upon again in a, 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 the same location or a different location? They were still in the same location. They had moved slightly, we believe, mm -hmm. um, and they were trying to get better sighting of him. Mm -hmm. And then so the, you know, there was fire and then response fire. And then was there another round as well? There were two, two uh, times where shots were exchanged by both sides. Joe? What about aircraft? Are you bringing any in? We've had aircraft in the area since then um, for the FLIR unit. However, our problem is because the canopy is so dense. And I know that there are people who say, why can't they bring a FLIR in? Why can't they fly this? The, the canopy is so dense, even the FLIR units are na not able to pick up our personnel. Where, where you know a person is, the forward-looking infrared unit is not able to identify where we are. So we have a known subject down there, we can't pick him up, so we, we believe that it's flying over him without identifying him. Yes? The second incident to where the team was fired upon, how did they suspect that it was Bassler? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. We believe there was only one person firing at the officers. We not believe there were two. Okay. And you don't know why yet? Um, we have no reason to believe there's any a second individual involved. Okay. <laughs> Kevin, if I can ask you, if I can ask you, have you spoken to your deputies and, and how are they doing? Uh, what, what's uh, their demeanor? Hold on one second. Okay. On the phone. Hold on one second, and we'll get all the phone questions in just a minute. So, um, as far as that, how are the officers yeah, doing? Let me see, Captain, have you spoken to your officer or your deputies, and how are they doing? You can step to the mics. Just, uh, just briefly, I have spoken to them. They, uh, they are doing fine at this point. I haven't uh, I haven't gotten in depth with them because, like the sheriff says, it's a, an ongoing investigation, and, and they need to speak to their representation and uh, and do some evidentiary processing before we can ask the pointed questions of them. How how long have those officers been deployed into that area? They were sent out in the field. They attended the zero eight hundred briefing this morning, and they were dispatched out to their their area of operation this morning. And how did how did they get there? Sheriff or Kev, can you comment on that? Again, that would be tactics, so I don't want to get into the tactics as we spoke of them. Okay, so everybody in the room, hold your questions one time, a little bit. All right, on the phone, go ahead. Uh, how many shots were fired at the officers uh, in the first, in the first uh, volley and in the second volley? We do not know the answer to that, and that would be... In the press release tomorrow, we, we literally do not know because those questions are being asked as as we speak right now at the uh, in a location where they're, they're being interviewed. How many officers do you have out there? 
At this point right now, we have approximately 40. Any more phone questions? No, Alameda County arrived Sunday night. Sunday night. So this is uh, their fourth full day, and they had been in, to answer your question, they had been in the field approximately two hours after they drove. Approximately two hours before this incident happened. And what other agencies are coming for mutual aid? We have, I believe, the Orange County Canines, Orange County Sheriff's Office Canines. Once again, we're going to see the Placer, uh, Placerville. Um, dogs come in and Lake County Sheriff's Office Sheriff Rivera called me immediately upon hearing of this and dispatched uh, members of his SWAT team who have arrived they were the first ones to arrive um, from outside the county and they have been deployed and, and, I'm sorry and, and Sacramento County Sheriff's Office sent um, several several squads over and where is the SWAT team from well Sacramento Lake County um, and then the, the, the Alameda, Mendocino, Napa, any yeah, of the SWAT teams here right now? Sonoma. Sonoma County's here and Sheriff Freitas also called me this afternoon offering more assistance if we need it. Sheriff, I'm challenging it for all of you knowing that this guy has survival skills and knows the lay of the land. How, how challenging is that for all of you? I, I truly believe it's uh, it's more challenging for the spouses than it is for the law enforcement. I've, I've uh, had law enforcement officers tell me their parents are concerned and their spouses are concerned. And obviously as sheriff, uh, we're concerned about the, the people that we're sitting out in the woods. But I can say this without equivocation. Every law enforcement officer that we've sent out in the woods has gone out there um, with a good attitude, with a, with a possibility of a safe apprehension and no one is questioning what their mission is. So um, if, if they're showing any fear or uncertainty, they certainly aren't showing it. Was there any visual? Uh, Sheriff, this is Casey again. Um, on Monday, you indicated that you were really close, that you felt you were really close to him. Does this sort of give you the idea that you really are closing in on this guy? We believe that we've really and truly encircled him in a, in a way that um, Tomorrow may bring resolution, right? we're, but we're not starting tomorrow by saying that we're in there any time constraints. We, but through the tactics and through the intelligence gathering, we're to the point of having an understanding that we're close to resolution. But I've said that for 34 days. Was there any visual contact at all with the suspect this afternoon? Yeah, there was very visual contact because I identified who it was. But hold on. I didn't hear your question, Jimmy. Yeah, how are these other officers? Are they being injured out there in the place uh, for us to go for? We have not, with the exception of one minor case of uh, poison oak, we have not had any sprains, any injuries, um, any injuries whatsoever to our law enforcement officers. So, anything else on the phone? Yeah, I'm going to ask you. This is Tom the Wolf that's calling with New York News Day. My question to you is, obviously this suspect has been, he's been hunting him for about 34 days and he's uh, shot an officer uh, today. Uh, luckily, uh, it sounds like no one was hurt. Uh, however, have you, um, and I see that your, your, your group is swelling, that you've got a few counties coming in Sacramento and Orange, and the last I heard it was Sonoma, Napa, and Alameda. Um, are you guys considering asking maybe federal authorities to step in at one point? Well, the United States Marshal Service has, has proven to be one of the best friends of the Sheriff's Office during this incident. And if those are the federal authorities, I, I want to assure you that they're there. The FBI supervising agent for Northern California called me this afternoon and advised me that their SWAT team is also on standby and just a request will be made and, and they'll be up there. I'm not aware of any federal agency that we've talked to that hasn't given us the resources that we're asking for. As far as if, if you're asking about military, no, there's no there's no thought to that because our Constitution clearly uh, dictates that doesn't happen. So uh, the federal authorities that are in law enforcement are out there helping us, and they're they're with in this to uh, to help with anything that we need. Just to clarify, the number of officers in the field, uh, you have approximately forty. What will the numbers be when we get to Sacramento County? Uh, tomorrow. Okay. 
Which one? Those will be released. We're, we're in a situation where the officers are being rotated. Um, the, off, the number may go up. I don't see it going up substantially because at this point we're, we're getting people in. The logistics of getting people in and getting them out, um, that's also presenting uh, its unique circumstance to us. So uh, I, I would imagine a number will go up tomorrow, but we'll have, if, if there's no fog, we'll have increased aircraft hopefully tomorrow. <coughs> And we'll be able to um, bring this to a safe resolution. I mean, that, that's let's get us down to. You know, I, I said Monday we, we're going to hope this ends without another shot being fired. Obviously, that didn't come to fruition. So we're we're going to continue with our um, with our strategy of getting to a safe resolution. But I also want to say that our officers are fully fully trained to do exactly what they did today. If they're fired upon or if they're in a deadly situation, they're certainly going to use their self-defense and their training as a mechanism. Sure. for those of us that are in the room, yesterday in your news release you identified the location of the suspected uh, burglaries of cabins. Could you point to on the map what area we're talking about there? Captain Smalcom okay. has gotten to know this area blindfolded. You know, without giving up, and, and that's the issue is, I still have no, officers out on the field, so I'm not going to give you the exact location. I can tell you that within a six square mile of about this range, Okay, and then goes from basically from the South Fork, the Yolo, the Yolo Basin, to Amoco Road. So it's on the it's on the, the eastern end of the, the search area where this is this is transpiring. And I wouldn't say so much on the eastern end; it's somewhere right in the middle, because that changes. It can't be specific. How close to the tracks? It's going quick. We we are not going to get into a specific location um, for obvious reasons. Not only for the officer's safety, but we surely don't want people to go into the area and uh, get involved in a situation that they would have no business getting involved in. Going back to my question, is, was there any visual or verbal contact with the suspects? Today? We're not aware of any verbal contact. We are um, aware of the visual because they identified him wearing black. They oh, could yeah. see through the spotting scope of who he was. Joe. You had said <clears throat> you had left word of how he can surrender. Uh, at various locations. Has he responded to any of those notes that have been left? We're not aware of any attempt that he's made to surrender. But I would beg his family, if they have contact, to trust us on this. And if they want him to surrender safely, if they want him to have his day in court, I, I am just a phone call away. And I would say that the, that the family has been on board and they wish the same thing. So it's, is, there, is there any possibility of trying to establish verbal contact with him? And, and we, with? Without getting into specifics, the question is, is there any possibility of getting into um, verbal contact with him? Um, we have made some attempts. I'm not going to get into the specifics of it. Uh, we have made some attempts that were not heeded. But his family members were involved with that. Have there been evidence of for other... Hold on one second. Dave. Sir, you indicated on Monday that you did not think Basler was uh, hunting, per se. But today, not only did he fire first, he also followed up with uh, flanking. That's leader, true. Which is That's true. generally regarded as a military thing. You're right. And, and, and obviously, we're learning more about Mr. Basler as we go along. Day 34, we know more than we do on day 31. Does this change the game His, his question was, is on Monday, we said we did not believe Basler was searching out for law enforcement or searching out any other um, individuals uh, for to shoot at, but today showed us that we were incorrect. Does his use of a military technique change the game for you at all? Is this altering the way that you're pursuing him? I don't think it changes the game. Uh, the question is, does his tactic change the game? No. Our, I want to say this clearly. Between the U.S. Marshal Service, Alameda County, the Sheriff's Office, and all the agencies, I'm not aware of anybody who doesn't have the training from day one that they would have been able to not identify the possibilities of things happening. The, the reason that uh, we believe that he flanked Councilman Mello is through our investigation. And that information has been covered at every briefing. So we, we know what the dangers are. And our officers and deputies are out there fully aware of what's happening. Are you going to shut the skunk train down again? That's If the question is, are we going to shut the skunk train down, that would be the... Uh, the option of the business if they want to do it but the skunk train has been very supportive of our efforts and they've worked with us and not only um, 
advising us of anything that happens out there, but transporting um, some members out there. And, and as you know, um, we've had law enforcement officers on the skunk train um, for the for the security that's involved. So you're not going to or order them to close? We are not going to order the skunk train to close. Did anyone encounter Mr. Bassler during this Sunday break-in the cabin? There had been no. There had been no contact of Basler. Today is the first day of contact since the dog bite incident that happened the first week. Mm -hmm. Was he actually bitten? We do not. We do not believe there's injuries on at least on the photograph. We can't see any. Mm -hmm. Anything else from the phone? Can you clarify the area that you think you No, I can't. I can tell you a six square mile area. Um, as was reported in the, the press release of in the area of uh, Norsburg, but I'm not going to be specific on that. In the area of where, I'm sorry, the phone is It's one word, North Spur, S-P-U-R. S-P-U-R. Is it one word or two? North Spur. North Spur. Okay. Yeah. And, he, and he, is he is basically surrounded by your office. We believe so, but we don't know that for a fact because it is so dense. And it's it's a very large area, and, and 40 law enforcement officers put into teams of whatever we have certainly aren't going to completely surround that area. I, I want to say this clearly, that if we have any idea that he's outside that area and going to any other location, we will once again use reverse 911. I don't want our citizens to believe that we're hiding his information and they're in danger. If, if we think he's heading towards another area, such as Brook Trails, and, I, and he certainly isn't as far as we know, we will notify the occupants of the residents of Brook Trails. Joe? Um, are you searching through the night as well? We're searching tw 24 hours a day. Joe? For Mr. O'Keefe, um, <clears throat> you had mentioned in the previous press conference that you had a special squad that had come in from Louisiana to handle situations like this. Are they still here? <clears throat> are you replacing them? And if so, are those replacements the same type? Uh, yes, just for the, the record, Don O'Keefe, U.S. Marshal speaking. Uh, that, that group is our special operations group. They still are here. They are specially trained to respond to national emergencies. Uh, they even do work outside the country. Uh, you know, high threat trials, um, situations like this, tracking situations of murder suspects. Uh, they're trained in the rural environment. And so they're, they're very well trained for this operation. And they come with all the equipment as well, both technical and weaponry. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you completely didn't miss this, but what, what was the approximate distance in the two encounters between the officers and the suspect? Approximately 100 meters, and we're saying that just from um, communications we have with them. We have not specifically asked that. That's a question that's be, that's happening right now. I also received a phone call today from Congressman Thompson, who has uh, who's offered. I know there's a question about federal agencies. Congressman Thompson assured me that if there is any difficult with a federal agency, difficulty with the federal agencies, he would assist, but I assured the congressman that it's a very good working relationship and our resource needs are being met. Uh, well, the budget concern is obviously there. However, public safety is going to outweigh a uh, budget concern. You, this, this mission is not going to be reduced on a budget concern. I've been in touch with our assemblyman, Les Chesbro. He's fully aware of what our budget concerns are, but um, we're not going to save a dime and compromise public safety in this situation. It's, if you look at the people who are out of work right now, if you look at the residents that live in the area, and if you look at the overall sensitivity of our citizens, our citizens feel under threat. And the sheriff's office is very proud to stand beside other law enforcement agencies to say, we understand what our mission is. And um, after this is over and the, the budget is determined, th then that's my my problem of, of trying to figure out how we're gonna pay for it. But- Just to clarify one last thing. Do you believe that these three officers were stalled by Aaron Bassler? Or did they come upon him and then he respond? Is that the he laying in wait for them and, and Open fire. I do not know the answer to the question. If your question is, do we believe that they were spotted by Basler or stalked? Yeah. We, we don't know the answer to that. We know that they were doing their job when they were fired upon. Mr. Sheriff, last question about just the, the budget issue. Do you have any sense of how much it costs at this point? Uh, I do. I, 
I don't like thinking of it. Um, I'm going to guess between logistics, between the overtime, the straight time, the travel, um, we're upwards of a quarter million dollars, um, possibly approaching 300,000. But on the other hand, I've been in touch with the, the chair of the Board of Supervisors, Kendall Smith. I've been in touch with our CEO, and I'm trying to keep them apprised of where we are in this. Uh, obviously, we're going to be asking the state for assistance, but there's no promise there. But let me ask you the question, and it's just an outside question. What else is there to do? We certainly can't walk away from a double murder suspect who's shooting at law enforcement officers and who's threatening a beautiful area of Mendocino County. We're not going to do it. But if it could end without another bullet being fired, it'll end safely. Anything else on the phone? <coughs> Anything else in here? Yeah, any areas being evacuated? Obviously he's you know breaking into cabins, some cabins, some full time residences. We're not evacuating any areas. However, it's important you understand that the vast majority of buildings in that area are unoccupied. They're summer cabins mm -hmm. and or maybe weekend cabins. I've had people say that they have weekend cabins, they're just not going to. And we're aware who those landowners are. And sure if I may jump in real quick. And also the reverse 911 the sheriff spoke about earlier goes out to those residents in that neighborhood advising them what they need to do. So, if there's any other major incident, um, we'll call the same type of press release for you, but it's very important that we get this out to the public that um, at this point, we're asking them to stay out of the forest. We're asking them to be aware of their own safety. We're asking them to use their brain on this one and let law enforcement do its job. And as soon as law enforcement does its job, we'll send out a press release, we'll call a press conference, and we'll tell you the details. But we thank our allied agencies, we thank Alameda County Sheriff, Gregory Ahern for, for setting up some of the best law enforcement officers that he possibly could. And we, I especially thank the spouses of the deputies and the officers. There's no way I can thank them enough. Thank you.